Hey everyone, welcome back to Cabrillo. If you're new, I'm Prez, and this is Cabrillo, my new city set in Northern California, or soon to be a city. Today, we're going to be building the road layout for downtown and then um, Southern Cabrillo, which is gonna be right across the river, South Cabrillo, um, which might have a different name in the future, but we're gonna be building the road layout mostly on this peninsula with a bunch of cool bridges crossing over. Before we get started though, we have to hop into Inspiration Station, the segment where I show you what I have in mind. So Portland's downtown road layout is widely regarded by urban designers as one of the best in the United States, if not the best. Um, and that's because the blocks are about 200 feet by 200 feet. The smaller the blocks, if, you, if you're not aware, the smaller the blocks, the, the more diverse development you're going to get um, because there are going to be more buildings. Portland also has a pretty extensive public transit system um, in downtown. This is kind of an overview of the max um, light rail lines, streetcar lines, and some bus lines in downtown. So we're also going to be planning those out in advance so that it makes sense once we place those down later. But the combination of these really small blocks, both in downtown and then across the river in East Portland, um, just makes for a really diverse looking downtown. Um, it's also got a really cool waterfront on the, you know, on the side of the, um, river closest to downtown. Um, and there's a freeway on the other side, um, connected to the downtown with bridges. We're not going to be building a freeway, we're actually going to be building a separate waterfront on the other side, but we're going to have a pole um, later in the episode uh, that, that you should definitely stick around for. We're going to start our um, series of poles that we're going to be doing in the series here, uh, in this episode. Um, so anyway, uh, getting started here. We are kind of, I'm evening the river out because the river was a little too wide when I started off. Um, I think I overestimated how wide I wanted it to be. So I evened it out a little bit. I evened out the location of the peninsula so it was a little less pointy. Um, and this is actually, it took me many iterations and many days to build this. I, I thought this was going to be a very easy task. Not really easy, just simple, and it, it wasn't. It took me a long time to plan this road layout in a way that I was satisfied with. I kept building it and it would be slightly off. But yeah, what we ended up with were blocks that were 210 feet by 210 feet, 8 units by 8 units um, in between the roads. And that was exactly what I was aiming for. I actually had to recalculate that just now because I had calculated um, the 10 unit by 10 unit number. Um, but really, the, the amount of space inside of the blocks is um, you know, 8 by 8. So I'm, you know, I'm assuming that's the, the way blocks are, are measured. And regardless, it's close enough. Um, so, so we're, yeah, we have approximately 200 by 200 foot blocks, which is excellent. That's exactly what I was going for. I know this might sound really nerdy and pointless, but it really matters. Um, a really important concept in urban design is that block size matters and smaller blocks are going to give you a more interesting city just on average, um, because they allow more opportunities for you know, smaller buildings that don't take up an entire block and, you know, make a sort of gargantuan um, wall um, that it's almost like a barrier in the city. So having tons of different storefront openings, etc., uh, which is enabled by smaller blocks, allows for more diverse city. I know it sounds like a really nerdy point, it, it, and it kind of is, but it does matter. And I, this is one of the main things I wanted to include here. I think Columbia City's blocks um, were about this size too, but I don't think I actually went for square blocks there. Uh, they were definitely larger than the ones here in... Um, Cabrillo, and they were they were definitely rectangular from what I remember. Maybe some of them were square, but uh, Cabrillo here is going to have the what I see as kind of ideal blocks in game, and they are you know they're going to shift from one orientation to another. Um, this kind of central avenue um, here that kind of splits into two. I'll, I'll kind of explain this road layout a little bit more. You'll also know I'm notice that I'm placing one way um, roads, which. I actually go back and mostly change. We're not going to have many one-way roads in downtown. I initially placed them because there are a lot of one-way roads in Portland, but then I realized I kind of want to have a little autonomy here and build my own my own city, and I don't want one-way roads everywhere in downtown. Um, that's because one-way roads in downtown can lead to cars going a lot faster. I mean, maybe you might not notice this in game just because of you know the simulation speed limits, but cars will go a lot faster when they feel like they have more room and. Just due to the perception of drivers. And that's a lot of downtowns in the United States. Um, although there's been, I haven't studied this enough, but I, I know there's been at least a little bit of a shift away. A lot of downtowns, um, even like downtown Sacramento, 
um, which has kind of a similar layout to Portland in that the blocks are pretty small and the, you know, everything's really diverse in downtown and midtown. Everything is one way, and it feels like you're in the suburbs sometimes because the avenues are so wide and the roads are one way, and it just, you know, driving there, you could feel safe going 40 miles an hour, which just is not good. Um, so preventing that by not placing one ways down, or at least throughout most of the city, is going to be pretty important here. So I do replace those those two way roads with with one ways. But yeah, if you're interested in learning more about why one way roads in downtowns might not be so good, and why you know you got to make sure that cars are going slower in downtown, even if it seems counterintuitive, uh, I'll link two videos in the description. One's going to be from City Beautiful. One's going to be from Big Mood Energy. Um, both talking about this you know the, this concept called well it's a, it's a term called level of service kind of a nerdy way of saying um traffic flow and we've tried to maximize that in american downtowns um and one-way roads can maximize level of service um at least relative to two-way roads but it, it's not so good when the vehicles are going really really quickly um Beyond just the confusion that one-way roads cause some people, there are safety concerns as well. I have been talking about uh, a very, very nerdy part of what I'm doing for a long time. Apologies there, but I, I think it is really important. Um, and I'm trying to have pretty decent, or like the, the city is not going to be perfect. Like the concept here is not to build a perfect city. I don't think that exists. I think cities exist in a historical context, but um, I'm trying to build a city that you know has a, a really uh, long history of um, you know, freeway, freeway revolts, um, activism against bad planning, and just decent urban design, um, like Portland's generally. Portland's not perfect either. Um, but th that's what I want to build here, and I think preventing downtown from turning into a speedway is, is a good way to do that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to implement things that I see as good, uh, good design concepts here in the city, and maybe we'll change them in the future, but uh, that's, that's why I'm going to probably only have a couple one-way roads in downtown if, if you're if you're wondering if i haven't explained that enough over the past like three minutes quickly before i try to catch up on what's going on in game uh, if you want to leave a like that'd be awesome or a comment or anything like that to show support if you're enjoying the video i'd really appreciate it um but anyway so we just built a really cool bridge uh I'll, it's in the network collection in the description of the video it's such a cool bridge um it's inspired by one in portland and one in sacramento where the road goes on top and the, and the rails in the bottom and specifically sacramento's um you you get right to union station right when you when you cross the bridge and i think it's really cool i i really love going over it and uh, arriving in downtown sacramento right at union station immediately so so that's kind of the idea there but right here I'm kind of planning the road light or the the transit layout and the bridge layout for the city um, mostly just the transit layout you'll see the bridge layout a little bit later but I wanted to plan this out because I was a little confused about what I should be doing here um, you'll see I'm using this is snip and sketch it's just a default Microsoft program you do the Windows key shift s to take a screenshot uh, of your screen and then you can open a window it's almost like markup on mac and um and iphone um, but it works really well for just basic stuff like this and i just wanted to have a couple different colored transit lines here uh and just try to figure out what they might uh, th these are all light rail lines by the way these are all light rails we're not going to have a, a separate um streetcar system in the city it's all going to be one um one light rail system maybe we'll have some sort of downtown like streetcar loop using the same vehicles but maybe smaller um you know, fewer cars than than uh than the light rail system we'll see i'm not exactly sure how that's going to work but that's kind of this is kind of what i'm what i'm envisioning the white is heavy rail existing um freight rail connections and uh the the amtrak california trains are going to travel um on these uh, on these um existing freight rail lines um, and, and we'll plan that out in the future a little bit more, but I'm placing down all the bridges and all the infrastructure for, um, for the, for the light rail system, which is going to be pretty extensive like Portland's. So I wanted to plan that out in advance. So let me know what you think of that layout. Um, probably not going to change it because I think it looks like a pretty good approximation of Portland's where it, um, ends up looping around in downtown pretty well. And, you know, Portland's I know is... Um, it, 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 there are some problems with congestion in terms of the light rail slows down a lot in downtown when it has to be on street level, but um, I'm actually planning on having certain roads that the light rail's on be transit priority 
uh, or transit only. We'll see. It, it's going to be a pretty extensive transit system in downtown that's going to get a lot of priority. You'll also notice that this there's a, um, a road with a bus lane kind of going through the center of downtown here. That's going to be a, a big um, focal point. And right next to it is a light rail um, line that is you know, where the road is exclusively light rail. There's nothing, no other. Uh, vehicles relied on it, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a very transit-oriented downtown. I know people have wanted this. Uh, I, I haven't placed bike lanes down yet, but I will. There's gonna be a pretty extensive. I keep saying pretty extensive, but like really, this is. I'm I'm trying to include a lot of good transit here, a lot of bike lanes. I would have included a metro system or some sort of electrified commuter rail, like you know, Caltrain is gonna be um, soon. But I, I wanted to be realistic with the scale of the city, and I figured it would be more, you know, make more sense to use um, the Amtrak California trains on like Capitol Corridor. And we're actually gonna plan out a fictional version of what those, those, you know, the Amtrak lines look like, you know, in, in our world where Cabrillo exists uh, in the future when we plan the transit out. But um, I figured that that would be better as a longer distance commuter rail because there aren't going to be too many other main population centers not connected by light rail here, mostly smaller um, rural villages in the hills that might need a, a train stop, but that would be better served by an Amtrak line. It's uh, like a more rapid Amtrak line, like Capital Corridor, um, which, if you're not aware, is the, the line that runs from San Jose to Sacramento. I, I think I mentioned it earlier in the episode and forgot to explain it, so uh, apologies about that. Anyway, um, crossing over the river here, we've placed all the bridges down, and one of the bridges is actually light rail exclusive, light rail and pedestrian, which is cool because I know there's one in Portland that is, that is like that. Um, and I, I wanted to make sure that we had a... Uh, there might actually be two in Portland, I'm not sure, but I, I wanted to make sure we had a transit exclusive crossing. Um, there will also be a, a, there's one bridge I didn't actually place that's going to be on the way far ends um, towards the east end of the downtown. Uh, if you, if you kind of know what the orientation of this looks like. But yeah, I mean, right now we're kind of working on the road layout for the area across from downtown, which, I mean, in Portland would be East Portland's. Um, not sure if there's a more accurate local name for it, but um, it's the area across from downtown Portland's. This is, I guess, if you, if you want to have an analog uh, to that, it would be South Cabrillo. But uh, we might have a more, you know, developed name for this in the future if you have, if you want to suggest a name for this district down here um that is you know, to the south of downtown across the river let me know um otherwise we'll default to south cabrillo but i think we could come up with something more interesting but yeah anyway right now i am I'm trying to integrate the rail line in with the road layout and um i had to modify the road layout a little bit you saw some of the blocks are a little bit larger just because having a rail crossing at every single block is a little much. Um, but yeah, consider all of this tentative. I'm planning on having rail yards along the um, eastern part of this southern shore. And you'll and also further further west than where we're building right now, there will also be rail yards. There's gonna be a lot of industry here. Um, a lot of it, there's gonna be some sort of a river port probably before where the bridges are just because of the way um, the game mechanics work. I can't really have, you know, the bridges open up like they should. Also, definitely ignore the rail connection and the way it's you know connected to the outside connection uh, of the rail and also the, the highway. We're going to kind of modify that as we go to make it more realistic, depending on how we expand the road layout. And also, this freeway interchange we're building right now, um, consider it possibly temporary, possibly not depending on if you like the concept of how this is implemented. But um, the alternative, we're, we're gonna have a poll in a moment on what to do, but uh, I'm considering building a freeway along the waterfront that is being dismantled right now, that used to be you know, along the waterfronts, uh, but cut the city off, um, cut Southern Cabrillo off from um, you know, its side of the waterfront. And uh, the city might be dismantling it right now. We could actually build that in game. It might be a little complicated, but uh, connecting this as a instead of, as a four-way interchange that leads to an avenue um, that's been retrofitted in, and having a um, a freeway that's being 
dismantled along the waterfront there. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll link the poll in the description. I think it'd be an interesting idea. I'm not exactly sure how I'd implement it, but uh, it's up to you. Should I do that? Should I uh, make this into a four-way interchange connected to an avenue um, you know, that used to be connected to a freeway? Let me know in the comments because I'd be down to try that. Another poll, also linked in the description, is what should we call this mountain? Um, the most liked comment in the last video suggesting names was uh, Roblox and Trains and Planes suggesting Mount Columbia to pay respect to Columbia City. Um, but there's another name I really liked that was from Paul, um, Mount Oso, which means bear in Spanish. There's also an Oso in the Diablo range in California, which is the mountains based off of. Let me know which one of those you like the most. It's going to be linked in the description of the poll. It's a YouTube community post. Uh, and also let me know about you know a freeway along this waterfront here, what you think. Um, two polls for one episode here linked in the description of the video. Once again, I, I'd really love to know what you think, and anybody can vote on those polls. Um, I'm not sure I want to do Patreon exclusive polls for this series. Let me know what you think of that. I, I really want to um, have this series be ultra democratic and everybody gets a say. So it'd be great if we could you know, have them all be public on YouTube. But if people want Patreon only polls, I might be down to do that as well for some of them. But yeah, let me know what you think of the road layout. This is the, this is the this is the layout. We're also going to have more roads extending into the hills a little bit. Although that's going to be kind of a park behind me. Um, I, I love all these bridges. I think they represent the city really well. A nice variety here. And this area kind of along the waterfront where I stopped building roads that you see. That's going to be where the, um, the Amtrak station is. And there's going to be a light rail station there as well. Um, but mostly that's going to be a, an older Amtrak station that is going to be the main connection and transit connection for outside the city. And I mean, yeah, let me know what you think of the road layout um, in, in the comments down below. I think it's probably my best road layout I have made in this game. I think it's the most realistic. I think it's the most sustainable. And um, even though there's a freeway on the bottom there that you can see, um, there's going to be a freeway in almost any downtown in North America. Um, and this one doesn't interfere too much. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the bridges. But yeah, uh, make sure to leave a like in the video if you enjoyed and uh, subscribe if you want to see more Cabrillo. That'd be awesome. If you want to download the save game for this episode and build on the road layout I just made, you can check out my Patreon in the description. You can also get episodes early there. Um, quick shout out to some patrons, Steger, James Brown, Joe Fox, Robinson Griffin, Rail Runner, and Mike Olog. Thank you all so much for supporting me over on Patreon. Really appreciate all my Patreon supporters. You can also become a YouTube member and get a bunch of perks um, at the link below or the join button below as well. So yeah, you can also uh, join us on Discord or follow me on Twitter. Those are both in the description as well we'd love to have you um but yeah that's it hopefully you enjoyed see you next time for the next episode of cabrillo